Hey guys, today we're going to be analyzing Sean Porter's training routine and we're going to be talking about how these things are going to affect him in the fight and we're going to be talking about how each of these things, because we have such a broad range of things to look at for Sean Porter. <clears throat> today we have heavy bag work, we have mitt work, we have some partner drills that he does um, and we have some, you know, not exactly mitt work, but the stuff that he does on the pads with the, with the big guy, but it's for power, right? With the shield. It's still technically mitt work, right? But, you know, it's not on the mitts, you know. It's for body punching and stuff, but it's the same concept, right? But we're going to be talking about some of that and talking about those kinds of ideas. <clears throat> but the first thing I want to talk about, there are a few things that Sean Porter needs to worry about when fighting Terrence Crawford. Number one, Terrence Crawford is an excellent boxer. It's very difficult to enter his line for free. Okay, here Amir Khan finds out in the first round that if you take a step with your punches and that's the only way that you can get on the line, he's going to be able to catch you with a hard shot. Now, not just then, but he's also going to be able to feint and draw those attacks out. Boom, drawing that attack out. So when you think you have control of Terrence Crawford, when you think you're the one, oh, I'm the one up in this game, right? He thinks I'm only going to shoot a jab this time. I'm going to shoot a one too. But now he's getting countered over the top anyway, right? But in any case, <clears throat> we're going to talk about some of that stuff as we're going to look at some of the drills that he does with his dad. Now first, we're going to take a quick look at some of the stuff that he's doing on the heavy bag. But I want to point out here, look at this right hand. Look at how he throws this shot and he doesn't transfer his weight, he doesn't cross the line, he doesn't change positions. Okay? He just brings his weight to the line and throws a straight right hand. But look at how his head is right in the middle of the line. Number one, there's no power in the shot. This is not going to be a punch that knocks you out. But what I want to point out to you is how square he gets when he lands this shot. Okay? He completely squares up. And this is why when Sean Porter <clears throat> gets dropped late in fights, this is why. It's because he doesn't know how to protect his head on one side of the line or the other. Because whenever he's throwing punches... Uh, especially his ones and twos on the outside, he's always doing it to stay in position to throw his next one, okay? So Sean Porter likes to keep his ones and twos together, and then he likes to keep his threes and fours together. And in that case, it's kind of a um, <clears throat> dichotomous. Like, if you watch the way that Floyd Mayweather trains, he likes to train all his straight punches, and then he likes to train his power punches, and he's, he always has them separate. Okay? This is very, very, very important, okay? Terrence Crawford does not train like this. And that's why he's so much better of a fighter, okay? Uh, but what I want to point out here is although it looks like this is really great work, he's doing a lot of really difficult things, Sean Porter is, these are really difficult things from an amateur level, okay? This is not high level pro stuff here with this. I'm not trying to pick on Sean Porter, but. When he gets his head stuck on the line here with his double, triple, quadruple jab into one, two. Number one, you're never going to be doing this against Terrence Crawford. You cannot afford to throw a jab like this and get on the line with him while you're stepping with every jab, right? Moving into position, step, 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 slide, step, right? Trying to get into position to throw the right hand. Now, the reason that he has to move so much and take so many steps to get into position to cross the line on the bag is because he doesn't have any head movement, okay? When he throws his jab, his head is already on the front foot. He doesn't have anywhere to transfer his weight into the right hand because he's already there waiting to rotate into it. But he's not really transitioning his weight, okay? Most of his weight is already there on the line so again, he's not really getting any weight into this punch. Now, we're going to take a look real quick at some of the games that he plays. <clears throat> and uh, on Patreon, I call them boxing games, um, your drills and stuff, um, that he's going to play. Now, one, he's practicing his boxing okay, on the outside. This is how he closes the distance, right? So he's practicing stepping with his jab, and then he's going to practice stepping with his feints. One, one, and then two, right? So number one, I want to say, first off, at least he practices fainting. Very few fighters actually practice fainting um, or controlling the line in a way that isn't punching, okay? This gives him the opportunity to look at his opponent. If you're always throwing your punch and committing, 
You have to be crossing the line all the way. You have to be changing position. And you're going to be covering the line because you're making a strike. You're not always going to get to see how your opponent reacts to it. Also, you're not going to be able to see if they're going to counter you. So at least he's practicing this in his routine here, right? Boom, until he gets across. And then, boom, new drill, right? Now they're going to say, okay, you've cut, you've closed the ring off, right? You've cut the ring off or you've, you've closed the space off, right? We're at a point where I'm in the corner and now you need to take an angle. Get off the line with me, right? And set up some big power shots. So he's going to shoot the jab and he's going to double feint just like he was doing before with his right hand. And now this time he's going to set up the body shot, right? Now, real quick, these drills here, they're the same ones that he plays. Is it this with this gentleman here? We're going to go over more here, okay? Here he is practicing the boxing, right? The ones and twos, right? It's not all the footage here. I don't have all of it. Thank you, Fight Hub, for what I do have. Appreciate it. But practicing his stepping with his ones and his twos, right? Just like he was doing with his dad. That's how he cuts off the ring. That's how he practices it. When he gets onto the onto the front foot with the guy, right? After he faints him, what does he do? Oh, God damn it. Boom, boom, boom. One, two. In, out. In, two, right? Just like he was doing on the mitts, okay? And then let's see when he gets into the along the ropes when the boxing is done ah getting to the inside just like he did here right throwing the shot crossing the line now he's going to come up throw a body shot he didn't really throw a body shot but controlling the space in a similar place right using the boxing to get into this position right let's see if he actually starts throwing some punches okay he's going to come in with an overhand right it looks like just like he was doing on the mitts right i think he did some of that faint faint right so here, right? He's practicing it here. Faint, 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 faint. Right hand, right? He's practicing a very similar motion here, right? Now instead of doing a straight right hand, he's getting on the line. He's throwing an overhand right, right? Now he's trying to do this is a seamless-like type of craft, right? So he can get on the line with his opponent, faint him here. Ha! You think I'm going to throw a jab? Ha! I'm going to throw a right hand. But now he can actually add power to that right hand as well, right? And then look at using the outside boxing punches to get on the inside, right? Boxing on the inside and the out, right? Boom, 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 boom. And then once he's on the inside, practice it trying to shift and move and throw those big power punches <clears throat> the same way that he did on the mitts with his dad. The same way that he does it on the heavy bag as well. Now, pay attention to these straight punches. Again, look where his head is. Straight on the line with them, right? Very poor technique. Very, a lot of lack of understanding of how to use the heavy bag. And I don't blame him because of the fact that he does most of his work in the ring, right? Now, real quick, <clears throat> this work here that he's doing is a direct replacement for heavy bag work. Direct. It's basically just heavy bag work that you do with your coach, Okay? His job as, as your coach is to watch your technique and make sure that he can improve it while you're still able to do these moves. Okay, And you get to look at an opponent, your coach, right, be in similar positions that you'd be attacking right, so you can see what it looks like. There's a big advantage to doing this stuff on the mitts with your coach, right? but it's not necessary. You can still get the workout as long as you understand how to translate your workouts to the bags. And I don't think that um, Sean Porter exactly knows how to do that. Again, look at him shoot his one-twos. One-two, right? One. Again, huge liability, right? Huge liability to step with your jab constantly, right? Constantly stepping with your jab. One-two. One. <clears throat> and now let's see him turn it up a bit, okay? Pivoting, shuffling, again, Moving around the bag in a very similar motion, slipping to the front foot. Remember when he gets to the front foot and then he pivots out? He didn't exactly pendulum step and circle out this time. He only uh, circled on the front foot. Uh, again, not translating it def uh, directly to his heavy bag work. Again, one, one, two, very, very poor head movement or uh, no head movement. All right, he's going to start turning it up, trying to get a little bit of power. Let's see. 
All right, practicing his little shifting and stuff. And again, almost exactly like he does it on the mitts or that that stuff with his coach here. Boom. We're going to watch a little bit more of that. And then we're going to watch um, boxing on the outside, right, real quick. Stepping with the ones, right? Step, stepping with the one, right? One, two, and then stepping with the second one as well. Okay? And then again... When he gets onto the line, he doesn't have to throw just a one. He can throw a two instead, right? A little bit of a feint here, right? As he goes a little bit from the front foot, boom, to the back foot, a little bit to the right, into the right hand. <clears throat> but see that little pendulum step, how he gets to the front foot off the right hand, and then he does that little shift here and swings out this way? Um, I don't think that that move is going to be super valuable for him um, against Terrence Crawford. I I don't think that he executes it well enough. I don't think he protects his positions well enough. Um, and I think that when he gets into that position, it's going to be a huge liability for him. Um, I don't think that, yeah, I don't think that he protects it very well um, for a few reasons. And we're going to see, oh, we're going to see because watch this, his lead right hand, right? Very similar, right, to what he was doing on the mitts with his coach, right? Faint jab, right? Faint, faint right hand. But I want to pay attention to the fact that I want you to pay attention to the fact that he does this always throwing a punch. Okay? Now we're gonna watch him do the drills again <clears throat> as I talk to this a little bit, but I want you to pay attention to the idea that he faints with his left hand, but he never faints with his right hand. Faint, faint left, slip to the front foot, and then he does a little shift right, just like he did on the heavy bag. Okay? Now he's gonna go back the other way, do the same drills. And um, doing one-twos this time, right? Head always in the same spot. Now, when he throws his one-two, he doesn't protect this position. He doesn't block. He doesn't slip. He doesn't roll to the back foot. This is going to be a huge problem for him if he's fighting Crawford and he's jumping in with his one-twos and he starts exiting the line and bringing his weight from here back to here and resetting in front of Crawford without checking without controlling the line, without asking Crawford, bruh, what do you think about this? Because if you throw a goddamn right hand at Crawford, you better believe he's going to be slipping that, he's going to be blocking it, or he's going to be getting hit in the face and coming back with his own jam, okay? And it doesn't look like Porter is going to be ready for that kind of stuff. Okay, maybe shooting the right hand here, boop, and then pendulum step, shift forward, right? Body shot. Now here we go into some of the fun games that he's playing with his coach, the little hand drills, and the reason why I think that he's going to be in danger. Again, look at Terrence Crawford fighting Amir Khan. Amir Khan's head is in the same spot. Amir Khan is a way better, on average, boxer than Sean Porter, right? The only difference is Sean Porter can take a punch, right? Now... Nobody wants to find out how well they can take a punch against Terrence Crawford. But everyone has to, okay? Everyone has to. And with the way that Sean, that Sean Porter is setting up his punches, right? Look at how he sets up his pull counter. One, one, two, pull counter. Decent, decent slip. Two, three. Pendulum, right? Stepping with the left hook here, right? Boom, okay? <clears throat> This is very important, okay? This over, over exaggerated or overuse of him stepping with his jab here, right? Same game. Oh, trying to draw the counter jab from Crawford, right? Trying to draw the, because that's another game that Crawford likes to play on the line with you, right? He likes to shoot a jab, and then when you counter his jab, he likes to pull off the line and counter you with his own jab. So he's trying to prepare. Um, uh, prepare him for that, which is great. I don't think that they're doing it the correct way. Um, again, especially because he has so many bad habits, right? This habit, jumping on the line here, it's not always bad. Um, if you know how to transition your weight, you know where your weight's supposed to be, you know how to defend the line during each beat, it's not bad. But you really have to be an expert at it. And I don't think that um, Sean Porter knows all the ways that he's supposed to do that. Especially because look at him so vulnerable on the line with the 1-1-2 here, right? Don't close your goddamn eyes, bro. 
Don't close your goddamn eyes when you throw punches, Sean Porter. Jesus Christ, Sean Porter. Are you kidding me? This is also probably why you go down in all your fights. Not only because your head's always on the line, right? And you get squared up. Oh, yeah, let's pay attention to that, right? Watch him throw the 1-1-2, one, one, right? Look at how square he is when that right hand comes, right? Boom. Look at how square he is in front of his coach. His coach is pretty squared too, right? But he's going to come right back across the line here, right? And look at his head. It's right back on the line. Didn't really go anywhere. <clears throat> uh, and you're going to be blinking, dog? Are you blinking? Are you blinking? Keep your eyes open. Same fun game after you get to the front foot, right? Boom, 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 slip to the front foot. And now he's going to do that same pendulum, slip, uh, pendulum step slip motion, right? To start throwing his pendulum right hand. Now, I want to point out, look at, at what point he fails here, right? Look at where his technique fails. Look at where his technique fails on the heavy bag. We just saw him do a very similar move, right? He's going to do, do a couple of boom, boom, one shift, boom, and then one, right? I guess that wasn't so bad. But I want to point out just real quick, it's very, very, very important that your coach can stress your technique and knows how to continue adding to your routines in a way that allows you to continue growing and stressing your technique. Again, think uh, Errol Spence's pad work, right? Again, practicing stepping with this jab, jab, off the line. On the line, jab, pull counter, right hand. So he's trying to time Terrence Crawford's jab. Now, one of the problems that I think that Sean Porter has, he almost always double jabs. And I think he's doing it here. I think he's jabbing, boom, and then he's going to stick his lead hand out there to try to angle himself um, for his slip, for his pull counter here. Now again, I don't know if he's going to be able to outsmart Crawford, right? I don't think so. I'm not going to say I don't know. I know for a fact he's not. He's not played the kind of boxing games that Terrence Crawford has played. Now on Patreon, I did a film study, a film study on Jaron Ennis, and I said something that uh, Jaron Ennis is, is the fighter that they think Crawford is, right? And and the guy thought that I meant that that, that meant that Jaron Ennis is better. People don't really know how good Crawford is. Okay? They think that, that that's what that's what Crawford is, right? A puncher, he's not a great boxer, he's not a good counter puncher or whatever they, I don't know what it is that stops them from knowing that he's probably the, the best pound for pound, right? You know, Lomachenko losing get loses him that spot. But I think that, you know, I know Usyk now, right, is, you know, almost, almost solidifying himself as the pound for pound number one, in my opinion, beating Anthony Joshua. Um, he's got to get one more of those guys, and then he's, and then Usyk is my top pound for pound, um, until Crawford moves up and beats some impressive people, right, beats Spence or whatever, you know, beating Spence or moving up to 154, um, but what am I talking about? Ah, right. Jaron Ennis, right? Um, Jaron Ennis is still a little green, okay? He's a big guy. He's been been fighting a lot of little guys. He makes a few mistakes. Um, not to bash Jaron Ennis, but Terrence Crawford is a very, very, very good fighter, you guys. He's very, very, very good. Um, and uh, I just don't think with the way that Sean Porter is training... He understands how to play the games with Crawford in a way that's going to allow him to win. As we can see, um, Amir Khan is very quick. Very quick on and off the line. Very few people in history could probably do uh, on and off the line like that, like Crawford. Now, I w I'm not Crawford, like uh, Amir Khan. I want to point out, Caleb Plant better at getting his head off the line than Amir Khan. So he had more success against Canelo, right? But Amir Khan, very good at getting on and off the line. Very, very, very good. Um, and I don't think that, again, with uh, Terrence Crawford, or with, with 
Sean Porter's only goal of fighting on the outside being to get into this position here to fight him on the inside, right? I don't think that he's going to... Number one, I don't think he's going to be able to fight Terrence Crawford on the inside. I think that... I think that Terrence Crawford has already fought better inside fighters. And we're going to go ahead and watch a little bit of some other games that he plays here. Really cool partner drills here. Um, but um, I don't think that he's going to be able to beat Crawford on the inside. And I think that he's going to get annihilated on the outside. Um, and uh, I think that this fight is going to be a really interesting measure, right? To kind of show us or show, you know, uh, who's right about Terrence Crawford. Right? Am I right about Terrence Crawford or is everyone else right? Right? Maybe he does wind up being a subpar boxer and he can't and you know, whatever, whatever, and the fight goes twelve rounds. Um, I don't think that that's gonna be the case. I do think it's it might even wind up being like, you know, first, second, or third round knockout. Um uh, I just I just don't think that Crawford is gonna be or uh Porter's gonna be ready for the How sharp Crawford is. Okay. Now, this is a really cool drill that they're practicing. Jab and then, then fainting the jab and then jab to the body. So this one was uh, jab and then faint, faint, faint. So he can get a look at what the faints look like, right? Now they're expecting Crawford to fight them southpaw, right? Because he fought a bunch of guys southpaw. He fought Jeff Horn southpaw. But... But uh, Jeff Horn wants to fight on the inside, right? So Crawford wanted to have big power punches as Jeff Horn moved into position one. Jeff Horn didn't want to box at all. And I think that I think that they're making a mistake by assuming that Sean Porter or that, that Crawford is gonna fight him um, southpaw. Uh, just like Ben Davison made a mistake in his analysis against Crawford versus Khan as well. Thinking that Khan was going to fight, uh, or thinking Crawford was going to fight Southpaw um, against him. Again, I think that he's going to fight him orthodox, just like he fought Khan. Um, just like I thought he was going to fight Khan, because he's going to be looking to time that that the one-twos of Porter. I think that those one-twos, again, we've seen the way that he trains them on the heavy bag and, and, uh, and stuff. We can see how he's moving around here in front of his Southpaw opponent, how his head is always in the same spot, right? Now... This is a really cool drill that they're practicing here, controlling the line, and then when his opponent shoots the jab to the body, right, one, boom, they're timing him, right? So as long as he gets control with the first step, right, boom, they're going to see him take lead foot dominance and step with the second shot. This is going to be a, re this is a really, really excellent drill, okay, guys? Really, really excellent drill. Not because it's going to help him just find the jab to the body. Okay, and then we're gonna play that drill again. I just want you guys to see the whole thing again. The first, excuse me, the first one being um, just controlling the jab and seeing the feints coming, right? And then a flow, right? Moves directly right into the jab to the body. Let's go ahead and get the beginning of that. Go ahead, boom. So jab and then feint, feint, right? Showing what it looks like, double jabs. Now again, Sean Porter's head is in the same spot no matter where he is on the line, okay? This is really important because this is the position that he likes to be in in order to make sure he can throw his jab. See how he throws his one-two? See how he always enters the line from this position here, right? One-two, two, right? Two, right? So real quick, let's connect some dots. Um, where are we in this video? We're about halfway. So where, what kind of games does he play on the mitts with his coach, right? Faint, faint, two. One, right? Where's his head, right? He practices throwing his jab from this position. He practices fainting from this position. He practices throwing his... Throwing his... One-two from that position. Throwing his straight right hand from that position. So when he's training and when he's sparring and when he's doing his live drills, he's trying to make sure that he gets to be in the position that he trains to be in to throw all of his punches. And this is the position that he looks to try to be in on the outside. The problem with this position is that when he pendulum steps and he looks to find a similar position here, he doesn't wind up pendulum stepping and crossing the line and 
I'll say charging up his weight. We're going to get to see some of that stuff too as he does these drills too. But again, I want you to pay attention to where his head is, right? How square he gets when he throws his, his punches, okay? Now watch him pendulum. Whoop. He's on the back foot, fine. But crossing the line, throwing the right hand, squaring up with his opponent. Look at where his opponent's weight is. Look at where his opponent's gloves are, okay? He's crossing the line, number one, his left hand is down. He's going to be getting hit with hooks if he's penduluming on his opponent here. So number one, for this engagement, if this is how he's looking to jump onto his opponent, Jeff Horn tried something really similar, and he literally just got sparked, right? No, he didn't get sparked. He ate some big punches. Jeff Horn is a big dude, though. But I want to pay attention. He doesn't control the space with the right hand as he's getting into this position, right? He doesn't know how his... Now, I don't know if he knows how his opponent's going to react because I don't know what drills his opponent is trying to practice, right? So maybe they're only working on uh, penduluming and they're not working about defense or whatever. But I want you to see how often he's squared up and how trying to be in that boxing stance coming straight out of a position here if he had just also squared up, right? And then coming straight out, remember when you throw your one twos and then you look to reset? Look at him resetting right there. That's not how you reset in front of someone. That's definitely not how you reset in front of Bud Crawford, okay? Crawford... Crawford is, man, when he is on you, right? Like people think, people think Errol Spence is relentless. People think Sean Porter is relentless. People think, but no one seems to remember how relentless Terrence Crawford is when he knows he's got you hurt. And here's the thing. Terrence Crawford only waits till you're hurt because he wants to. So I don't, I just don't see Porter being able to exploit the openings he thinks that there are going to be there. I don't think that he knows how many openings there are when he's crossing the line. And here, pay attention to how he's always shuffling forward. A little bit of pendulum steps, right? Baby pendulum steps, right? Front foot. But look at how when he gets to the front foot, he's never going to control the line with his right hand. Okay. He's only going to look to pendulum step here and control the space from his left shoulder, right? Again, this is going to be a huge problem for him when he fights Crawford because Crawford does like to get to the front foot. Even if Crawford does fight him as a southpaw, when he looks to pendulum step on his opponent, when his opponent's weight is here getting to the front foot, if he's penduluming here onto him, that hook is going to be there, right? Bringing his weight here, he's going to be setting the trap to catch this Catch that control as he comes in. And again, I just don't think that... I just don't think that... Um, Sean Porter is learning to control the space with his rear hand enough. Here you go. Controlling only with the left hand. Control with the right. Now look at how wide he was with this control of the right, right? He sees his opponent trying to scoop out, right? Whoop. But look at how big and square he is, right? Again, it's... These are excellent drills, right? And you should practice them. But uh, sometimes it does help that your opponent can just punch you in the face, right? So you don't do silly stuff like that. But I'm more more interested in the idea that and how how very little control he looks to get with the line with his rear hand. How he always tries to keep his left shoulder forward, right? Pointed at his opponent. Look at him have to reset here because of that, right? Boop. And now he has to reset and bring his left shoulder forward, right? Now think about this, okay? He just transferred his weight to the front foot a little bit here. Very similar to if he had just thrown a right hand, right? Again, he doesn't transfer his weight to the front foot. Now look at him reset. Just like he had thrown a punch, okay? Again, his footwork is just not as good as people think, even though he's quick, right? This is pretty quick, right? That's a huge pendulum step. Look at how square he is. Look at how when he transferred his weight with the pendulum step, not only is he not controlling the line with the left hand to keep his weight on the back foot, he's not controlling the weight, or he's not controlling the line with his right hand so he can keep his weight on the front foot. He's in the middle of his line. And again, this is what I'm talking about when he pendulums around and circles around on the bat or circles around on his coach. 
and he finds himself squared up or he finds himself not in a position to throw a power punch like he's practicing, like he's hoping, like he does with these big spin moves on the, on the things with his coach here, but he's not getting into the best positions, right? We're going to watch him do one here. He'll do it any second. When he shifts to the front foot, we'll pause it, hopefully. Boom, boom, boom. Now he's going to pendulum step. He's going to shift a little bit this way, right? Boop, there you go. And look at him in the middle of his line here, guys. Right here. Again, this is going to get him knocked out by Sean Porter. Or by Terrence Crawford. This is going to get him knocked out. This is the position where he looks to be in. Because this is how he's looking to reset. Get that left shoulder forward. Right? Now, there's nothing inherently... Ooh. Throwing this right hand. And look at him fall out of position. Right? He turned it into a decent pendulum step. Right? Boom, 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 boom. But again, resetting, right? And then look at how he has to reset right after that next shot here. Again, he's just too slow on the inside. He's, again, that move right there, not great. Shooting the shot, boom, and then resetting. And then getting the elbow, missing a whole beat of control there. Boop, no control of the line after. A little bit with the one, two. This move here, the epitome of what's going to get him, you know, kind of messed up, right? Throwing this shot here. I can't really tell if his glove is in a position to guard the line from this position right here. But, um, again, him thinking he can cross the line with this pendulum step here is going to be very, very bad for him, I think. Boom. Look at his head straight on the line right there. Now, again, we're going to take a look. Whoops. Whoops. At the last of his partner drilling. Because some of it's pretty good. And again, against someone who can't really set traps against you and pendulum step. And probably, you know, the kid's a young amateur. He probably doesn't have a very good pendulum step. Right? He probably doesn't know how to set a trap. Look at him, pen uh, look at him um, pivoting on the front foot here, right? Trying to bring this and then trying to circle and walk out this way. Ooh, dangerous, right? Get the... Get the ring cut off on him. But look, when the guy, when Sean Porter pendulum steps on him, transfers his weight, he's about to pendulum. He's in mid, he's in mid pendulum too, right? He's in mid pendulum. All he has to do is get his weight to the front foot and beat Sean Porter to this position and then come back with the hook. But he doesn't see it, right? Also, right, they're probably not drilling that. They're probably not to be like super aware of all the intricacies of like trap setting and stuff, like whatever. Um, it's going to cost them really big against Terrence Crawford because if they have not been watching Jeff Horn get smacked around by uh, Terrence Crawford, they have no idea what they're in for. And again, I think that, I think it's funny because I think that on, on average, Jeff Horn is a way more difficult fight than Sean Porter. He's a way more difficult fight. Um, he's bigger. He's way more rugged. He's way more tough. Um, and the welterweight division is really lucky that Terrence Crawford beat the crap out of him. They're really lucky that that Top Rank had that really intricate plan to trick Pacquiao into fighting Jeff Horn in in Australia. Very likely guaranteeing Jeff Horn that as long as he doesn't get knocked out, he'll win the fight so that they could take that belt from Manny Pacquiao and give it to Terrence Crawford to try to make him relevant in the welterweight division before Errol Spence moves up, right? Because I guess Terrence Crawford didn't really want to fight Manny Pacquiao, right? Or did Manny Pacquiao not want to fight Terrence Crawford? I don't know. I think I heard... Terrence Crawford didn't want to fight Manny Pacquiao. But I don't know. Maybe that maybe that $5 million stuff was like all smoke. Who knows? I don't know too much about it. But in any case, Terrence Crawford is a bad dude. He's a really, really, really tough fight for anyone, um, any generation. Um, that is not the case with Sean Porter. Uh, Sean Porter is not... He's a pretty good, like... I'll say Tim Bradley 2.0, right? Maybe 3.0. But um, I do expect Terrence Crawford to kind of annihilate him. Um, again, a lot of these little flaws 
of Sean Porter pendulum stepping in front of his opponent, not controlling the line, not fainting, not probing. You can't just do this in front of a high-level guy, okay? You can't just do that, okay? Terrence Crawford's going to time you when your weight gets to the front foot. He's going to time you when you move your weight to the back foot. Um, so anyway, um, a really interesting routine from Sean Porter, right? Obviously, ones and twos close the distance. Obviously, you're going to throw your hooks and your uppercuts on the inside. A really interesting pattern, right, and, and training path. Very, very simple between Sean Porter um, and his, uh, you know, world title aspiration training routine, right? Not a lot of intricacies there, right? They throw a couple straight punches, step with them a little bit. Their technique is okay. Uh, they're sharp, that's for sure. Um, all the stuff they're doing, they practice it hard, they train it hard, they do it with discipline. Um, but there's no head movement. Your head's supposed to move when you throw your straight punches. And his head's always in the same position. And I don't think he realizes how much that's going to impact him against someone who can move their head even just a little bit. So... Um, yeah, while I'm super stoked to watch the fight, I'm expecting it to be a wash. I'm expecting it to be a wash, um, not even a close fight. If Sean Porter, maybe Sean Porter is better on the, no, we've seen him on the back foot. Ah, <laughs> uh, oh well. Anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, and also don't forget to check out my Vimeo programs. Uh, to teach, not only to teach shadow boxing, to teach pad work basics, um, and to teach you the best drills I know how for teaching your positions, okay? These are the drills that even though Theo's getting much, much better and he's ready to do more advanced drills, these are our core drills um, that we do to improve our body mechanics, improve our speed and power in our hands, um, and uh, improve our athleticism, okay? Uh, so check them out. Um, also, if you're interested in learning how to build real boxing power, um, a lot of people think that you, punchers are born, all that stuff, yada, yada. But I guarantee I can teach you professional level boxing power uh, with this boxing program. Um, check it out. It's my pendulum boxing program. And again, everything right now is 30% off with promo code 30. Um, I also have a set of partner drills that will teach you and a friend <clears throat> how to box how to get on the line, how to do the things that Terrence Crawford, or rather that Sean Porter is trying to do here with the mitts on his dad, right? It'll teach you how to get on the line safely, how to control the line, how to feign and probe, how to set up your pendulum steps. It'll also teach you how to do this as a southpaw. It'll teach you how to do this against a southpaw. It'll teach you how to do this as a southpaw against a southpaw. <clears throat> anyway. Um, again, and it'll teach you with brand new, uh, very green fighters who don't have a lot of experience, who make a lot of mistakes and have a lot of opportunity for you to see and learn from, um, so that you won't make any of those mistakes later. Now, one of the most interesting things, well, never mind, never mind. Moving on, moving on. Uh, anyway, 30% off in my Vimeo, my Vimeo shop, um, with promo code 30, um, pad work. Partner drills, shadow boxing, shadow boxing mastery for power. Um, yeah, anyway, thanks guys.